So I started researching the most nutritious foods that you can grow, and I came across Moringa in my search. Hi, welcome to Lilies and Tomatoes, your go-to place for simple and practical tips and tricks on how to start a garden all the way through how to use what you grow. This is from my live class that I teach on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on Facebook. If you'd like to attend a live class or ask me a question, check out the link in the description. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my basement workshop. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Moringa. What is it? Why you should grow it? And um, and I'm gonna be potting up my Moringa seeds that or seedlings that we started using the Petri dish, me dish method uh, a couple of weeks ago. If we have not met, my name is Quincy Adams and I want to help you grow some of your own food in a small space on a budget. Let's get started. Okay, so what I've got here are two moringa seedlings in a solo cup and as you can see the roots are starting to come out the bottom this is not root bound yet this is a a good size these are two nicely developing seedlings but they need to be potted up moringa grows really really fast so i will first give you some info on moringa and a little story about how I decided to grow it. I've got notes because I wanted to be accurate without going too far down the science rabbit hole. Okay, so Moringa, the Moringa Olifera um, tree, it comes in shrubs and trees. It's native of, to India, uh, but it's grown around the world right now. It is also called the drumstick tree, the horseradish tree, and the miracle tree uh, because of all the health benefits from it. If you're growing it in the States, it's hardy to zones nine and 10. You can probably get away with growing it in zone eight, but when the temperatures are consistently below 70 degrees, it's gonna start to lose its leaves. It can, uh, it goes dormant in the winter time if, there is, if the winters are cold where you're at. It can handle a light frost, but if it freezes completely, it's gonna die. So if you're gonna grow it outside of zones nine, 10, or potentially eight, like I am, I'm in seven B, I am putting it in, growing it in a pot, not outside, and I will be bringing it inside for the winter. Uh, all parts of the Moringa tree are edible and used for medicinal purposes, but only the leaf part, this part up here, is considered safe for daily consumption. But the leaves, the fruit, the bark, the roots all have, and the seeds all have medicinal purposes, and the seeds can be used for water purification. Growing it, uh, it's not super picky about the soil, as long as the soil is well draining. Uh, it doesn't really care that much about um, the pH or um, being super fertile soil, it'll grow in poor soil as long as it has enough space for its tap root. It does grow long tap root. So when they're more mature, they, it has a tap root that kind of looks like those, uh, what were those things? The mandrake roots on Harry Potter. All right, so let's talk about the nutrition. And this, I wanna focus on the leaf part. There are studies done in other countries on the nutrition benefits of other parts of the moringa tree but i want to focus on the leaf because i'm growing it for the leaves um 100 grams of dry moringa leaf contains 10 times the vitamin a of carrots 12 times the vitamin c of oranges 17 times the calcium of milk 15 times the potassium of bananas 25 times the iron of spinach and nine times the protein of yogurt also this is one of very few trees where or vegetables where if you cook the leaves, it maintains its nutrient value. So most vegetables, once you cook them, you reduce the nutrients in it, not with the Moringa. So you can dry the leaves, you can eat them fresh in salads, you can cook the leaves. Um, you can also cook the fruit. Uh, I've, I've never had the fruit. Uh, it grows a long pod. It looks kind of like a noodle bean or like a really long, Green bean, when they're small, they're edible. You can fry them up like a, in a stir fry and cook them and eat them. And, uh, and then when they get bigger, you can actually eat the seeds, but only the leaves are safe for daily consumption. 
and pregnant women should not eat the bark or the roots. The other benefits of Moringa, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, it's high in antioxidants, it lowers blood sugar, and it improves heart health. So if you want more information on some of the studies they're doing with Moringa, I downloaded an NIH fo uh, fo file on that. I can send it to you if you want me to, but um, basically the leaves are delicious and nutritious. It tastes a little bit like the matcha spirulina combination. So if you're not into health foods, then um, it tastes a little bit, just a tiny bit grassy, but uh, I put I like to put the leaves, the powder leaves in smoothies. And now that I'm growing my own fresh, then I'll be putting the leaves in salads and stuff. So that is the nutritional value of Moringa. And I actually started to grow it because uh, I was having health challenges and as a gardener I was just like there's got to be a way for me to grow something that is more nutritious than taking a bunch of vitamins and supplements or taking a bunch of medication. So I started look, researching the most nutritious foods that you can grow and I came across Moringa in my search. I was also looking at foods that reduce inflammation in your body and Moringa came up on that search too. I watched a bunch of videos who you of people who use Moringa to treat um, rheumatoid arthritis. And I was just like, you know what? This sounds like something great. So then I started researching how to grow it and uh, it can be done in containers. This is a dwarf variety, so this is not gonna get super big. The full sized Moringa, some of them can get over 50 feet tall and it grows really, really fast. So when you sprout, if you buy seeds and sprout them from seeds, you wanna make sure that you get it in a permanent container or at least a semi-permanent container pretty quickly because um, it needs to grow a long taproot. So if it's not able to develop a long taproot, it's not gonna grow very well. So, and I have, so I, ha I brought down two of these little things with two seedlings in each because I'm gonna put four in the container that I'm using. This container, I will show it to you in a second. But first, I'm going to show you just a little bit of what the the roots look like. I'm not going to take all the soil off this, but um, oh, can you see it? This way, this way. Okay, so this little nub right here, this was the seed. So like the the top part came out, and then the root part came out. And uh, so this is, the seed is still attached. It's still uh, doing its thing. All right, now this pot. This pot is a pretty big pot. I've already put soil in it. It is a mix of um, coconut coir, perlite, and potting soil. And I am just going to be using my little handy dandy hori hori to make a hole and then drop the seedlings in there. I'm not going to plant them deep, but I am going to make sure that I cover the seed part up again. And I want them to be spaced as far apart as possible while also keeping them over the deepest part of my pot. Because as you can see, it tapers down a lot. So at the top, it's 15 inches across, but at the bottom, it's only seven inches across. So I want to get them around the outside perimeter of the deepest part of the pot when I plant them. So I'm just going to make a hole in here um, and drop them in. I'm not putting in them in too deep. And then once I've got all four of these in here, I will show you what this looks like. But I'm just sticking the hori hori in. I'm pulling it over so there's a gap. I'm leaving it in there to hold open the gap. And then I am dropping the seedling in. And then as I push the seedling down, I pull out the hori hori. And then once these are all planted, these are gonna go in my greenhouse. 
So if these were in the upper greenhouse and they were in direct sun, I'm just squeezing this cup so I can pull this out of here. But while it's acclimating to its new container, I want to put it in an area where it's going to be not exposed to direct sun. These are a little bit close together. So it's going to be a little bit protected for a little for a while until I fully plant them out. And putting the third one in. And then the fourth one. I'm just dropping on top. And rinsing my hands. Okay, so I'm using bamboo skewers to just keep these propped up until they take hold and grow on their and start growing straight up on their own. So I'm being very careful to get it close to the seedling, but without actually stabbing the roots. And then as these grow, they're gonna, I'm going to be growing them specifically for root, I mean not for roots, for leaves. So I will be pruning these back severely because it helps them grow more branches and more leaves. So there we go. We've got um, four seedlings in our pot, kind of close together. They're probably, about four inches apart, but these are dwarf and um, there's plenty of other room for the roots. They should be fine. A lot of the websites I consulted about growing them uh, intensely. Some people say that you can grow them like, uh, a, a, what's it called? Not the bean shoots or it's the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I lost the word. It's when you grow them without soil very closely. Microgreens, grow them like microgreens. <laughs> oh wow, you guys, it's been a long week. So um, you can grow Moringa like microgreens. You can buy the seeds on Amazon if you're gonna do that because you can get, um, a lot of people sell them in packs of like 100, 200 seeds. Uh, I got these on Baker Creek because I wanted a small variety because I wanted to put a bunch of them in the same container. Do I have any questions? It looks like there's no questions. So if that is all from you for, um, if there's no questions, then I will let you guys go for tonight. Have a good night, stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, do all the things. Uh, and I will see you next week with some exciting news. Bye.